Top March 2023 has started. We're going to show you guys what is going on and also we're going to look for our favorites of the show. Here's an overview of Top March 23. Let's dive right in. almost no other place like Monaco, maybe Beverly Hills, where you can see as many cool cars in a very tiny space. There's two shows happening on a regular basis that we attend as Brabus. One of them is Top Marks, the show focused on cars, which we're at right now. And the other one is Monaco Yacht Show, the biggest and the most exclusive yacht show happening every September. But let's talk about Top Marks. You have to realize Monaco is a tiny, tiny town. There's very little space. So you actually have to walk down underground into the exhibition center. And there's three to four different areas, very tiny areas that make up the whole exhibition. However, the audience more that makes up for it because almost everybody who walks in is a supercar collector, a celebrity, an athlete who is more than capable of buying any single one of our products. Okay, here's how we're gonna choose our favorites. We'll walk in, walk around, look at each different each area and give you a few of the cars that both Cedric and I like. Let's go. Okay, number one car that I really like. Look at this. It's spectacular color. Really, really nice. SLS going in yellow and one in black. Are you a going person or a roadster person? I mean, driving a roadster is always nice in the summer, but having the exactly. like, racy style. I mean, the, go, the going is the going. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's the successor of the going. And of course, an iconic car. But I have to say, when it comes to SLS, I'm a Roadster person. I love driving SLS Roadster because of the long bonnet. It has an amazing sound. Here's the thing. We've been building so many black cars over the years that I find myself gravitating to color and colors like this one more often. And I have to say, I really like it. However, if I would build a car for myself personally, I think it would turn out to be a Roadster in black. White carbon fiber accents, gray contrasting parts. I think this GT2 RS looks absolutely spectacular. That's why it's one of our favorites of Top Marks 23. What do you think, GT2 RS or GT3 RS or a completely different car from the lineup? Which 911 would be yours? GT3 RS. Really? Yes. That is interesting. I, I wouldn't have thought that. You're, so you're a race car person at heart? Yes, the combination out of race and street is nice. I think that, okay, I have to say I'm a, I'm a pretty relaxed driver and I don't often drive on the track. What I'm looking for is high performance cars that are fully usable in the city. And therefore I would always go for a 911 Turbo, Turbo S. It's got the seat heating and it's got all the creature comforts I need because I'm just, I mean, just a lazy Autobahn guy, I guess. Uh, but I have to say, this is nice. What I don't like about the GT2 RSs, GT3 RSs is that they have so much so many spoilers and it's, it's just too racy for me. That, but that is my own personal taste. How about the GT3 Touring? Now, if I had to choose, honestly, between the GT3 RS and the GT3 Touring, I, I wouldn't think for a second. GT3 Touring all the way. You get the spec of the GT3 RS, but you get it in a, in a package that is made for the road. I'm in 100%. Next up, Bugatti Veyron, absolutely fascinating car, a thousand horsepower, over 400 kilometers an hour, top speed. I think it belongs in any high, high-end car collection. And there's, a, of course, an ongoing debate about whether it's better to have a Veyron or a Chiron, or if you can afford both. Would you choose a Veyron or a Chiron? If I would answer in your style, it would be always the next. Always the next. No, it's, I'm, if I had to choose between the two, I'm a Chiron fan. So the successor of this car, I can see why people like it. It's not really cheap though, because this one comes in at about one and a half million euros. So you have to have the necessary change to afford that passion for collecting. Now, this is really nice. Ferrari Enzo in either, I can't really see it either. It looks like a very, very deep blue, dark blue or black. Anyhow, I love it. It's of course a massive collectible, same as its successor, the LaFerrari, and this has got to be millions of euros. I think it's a very elegant car, and I have to say I like it when Ferraris are not red. I think I've seen Ferraris in red for too many times. Like if you, if you were to build one right now, what color would you choose? Black. In Germany? Yep. All black? Yep. Rob Stout. And yellow in Miami. Yellow in Miami, okay, so we're gonna have to get two Ferraris. Yep. That's next month's salary. Are you taking me to Miami? For sure, by car. On, on your jet? Yeah. Okay, fine. 
I'll come along. Are you a fan of classic Ferraris? Yes. You know I am. And I brought you one. It's still in its original packaging. Isn't that cool? I think it's one of the best marketing ideas on the show. Looks like a model car, but in life size. Okay, this is a 330 GTE in 2 plus 2 in gray Ferrari coupe from the 60s, probably 65 or 66. And I have to say, I'm a big fan of classic Ferraris. If you take two brands like Mercedes and Ferrari and you compare them, both brands were in what I think one of the absolute best periods of automobile design ever period. However, they both did completely different things. You drive a Mercedes from the 60s different than you drive a Ferrari from the 60s. They feel different, they're different animals, and they are the starting point for where both brands are today. And I think you can understand a Mercedes better by driving one, by driving a classic Mercedes like the W111 or the Pagoda or the 300SL. And you can understand a modern Ferrari better if you drive one of those or 250 or 275 they were of course built in very low volumes at the time so there's many 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 different models some of them became collectibles some did not but generally speaking classic ferrari is both one of the classiest cars you can drive one of the rarest cars you can drive and probably one of the most expensive cars you can drive okay guys i think i found my i found one of my favorites of the show and i think i fall in love this is a Fiat 500 from 1966 in dark blue. How cool is this car? It's so tiny. How fun is this car if you go, if you drive through Monaco? Actually, you know what? Let's see if both of us fit in the car. Let's just jump in. <laughs> I love the car. Oh, it's so small for me. Oh, think more. I like it. I mean, now, the both of us, Fiat 500, go trip to Saint Tropez, but then we've had so many dates, maybe I'd take somebody else this time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ah, uh, what, a, what a cool car. I love the color. It's, it looks so small from the outside. I would not have thought that we have this much space, but the same is true for the Smart 4.2. When you see it from the outside, it's a really small car. When you sit inside, it's actually really nice. Mm -hmm. How much is it? Yeah, ah, 29,000 29, euros. Yeah. So you get a Fiat 500 in dark blue for only 30,000 euros. And then you can go have fun with it in Monaco or Saint-Tropez. What a cool idea. Again, Cedric, which one's your favorite? I mean, I have to say mint is nice, red is nice, blue, but they're all nice. The mint one gives me more Italian vibes. True. Yeah, but then dark blue is also pure Italian vibes, but it's a different, it's a different car. Both nice. You take the mint one, I take the blue one. Then we go on a date at Saint-Tropez. Are you saying yes? Yes. He said yes. We're going up. Always. No? How many directions are there at Brabus? Only one. No, two. <laughs> up or forward? <laughs> We were just talking about one of those special Porsche models that I think are, is one of my absolute favorites. And here it is alongside another very interesting Porsche variant, the 911 GT3 Touring and the 911 Dakar, which is also a super nice variant. I know which one I would take. Obviously the understatement GT3, the GT3 Touring, because I like a car with a lot of power that is really understated, that doesn't have all the spoilers, all the track equipment, but still packs a punch. And that's why I'm a big fan of the 911 11 GT3 Touring. I love the idea of the Dakar. There's history to it. It's rally inspired. It's interesting to see a 911 in an atypical setup. But then if I had to choose one, Turbo S or GT3 Touring all the way. Okay guys, this is one of the rarest cars at the show. It's a Bugatti Cento Dieci or a Bugatti 110. Made for, in reference to the 110th anniversary of Bugatti and also as a reference to the Bugatti EB110, one of the first modern super sports cars. Absolutely crazy car, built only 10 times and the retail price at the time was 8 million euros. So it's one of the rarest and it's definitely one of the most expensive cars that we see here the show white black carbon fiber an absolute alien of a car it's crazy based on bugatti chiron so essentially a special body version of the chiron but heavily heavily modified if you look at the back both the front and the rear has very little to do with the chiron if you put them side by side and let me tell you i know a thing or two about developing uh, special bodies for cars this retail price of 8 million euros has a reason. It's crazy. It was introduced in Pebble Beach and I believe all cars were sold immediately at that introductory event. Crazy. Do you like it? A real answer? Yes. No. Why? It's not my type of like design. It's 
too over designed for me. You think it's over the top? Yeah. Let me tell you, I love the rear. I think it's absolutely spectacular the way it looks. The issue I have, the side is it, it's it's fine. It's a Bugatti, but the front is just not my thing. Maybe it's the color, but I don't like how it has several steps in the front and it looks a bit like an alien from the front, but the rear of the car is one of the best I've seen in a in a hypercar. So I've got mixed feelings about this. That doesn't make it less of a collectible and there is a lot of people who are paying big bucks for this anytime a car comes to market. It's a super nice car. I've never seen a four-seater hypercar. It's really something else because you have the shape of a hypercar or of a super sports car, the doors opening like those of a supercar. You have all the ingredients and then suddenly you look inside and there's four seats. And that is what makes the Jumeirah super special to me. What's the price of a car? Uh, right now it's set for 1.6 million. Yes, and 1. Plus, uh, as I said, it's going to change in two weeks time. I heard that production is pretty much sold it's for the sold next out. for uh, the next years. I think it sold out pretty shortly after Geneva when it was uh, released uh, two years ago. I have to say I respect what Koenigsegg is doing because they've been at it for decades. And Christian has been on a mission to build his own car or his own cars now for almost 20 years. So for a long time and he's never gotten deterred from it. So respect. I think it's a cool car. Hybrid drivetrain, combustion engine plus electric, 1,800 horsepower, four seats, looking like a hypercar. Um, I think it's a massive success for Koenigsegg. Yeah, you should come and have a seat. Can I? Yeah. Nice. Here's the way many people try to get in a get in a super sports car, the way you get in a conventional car, but it doesn't work. So, leg first. What I actually learned from my dad driving another one of those cars that we talked about, the EB110, the inspiration for the Cento 10, is this is the way you get in a supercar. Behind first. There's carbon fiber everywhere you can see, and it's actually pretty spacious because I'm personally not a fan of cars that you cannot sit in. I don't see why I should buy a road legal car that doesn't offer space and isn't comfortable, even, even though it has a lot of performance. And this has the bucket seats, but still, I'm, a, I'm one meter 89, so one meter 90, and it has enough space. Also, Cedric, look at the panorama roof or the, the, uh, the glass part in the roof. It's really nice. Do you have your own uh, navigation system and center, center display? Or are, you building on a, uh, are they building on a technology that, that was existing? No, it is all new uh, development uh, made by Koenigsegg, uh, but obviously will also support Apple CarPlay. It's really nice. And the full uh, automated uh, skin, so all hoods and doors open. Uh, Interesting. Doors. So you see here is one bag. Interesting. And the bags come with the car? I think you can uh, order them separately. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then I think uh, three of these ones and uh, one in the front. Interesting. Also, Cedric, look at the wheels. Really, absolutely fantastic. Of course, much lighter than a traditional forged wheel. By the way, both have their advantages. A forged wheel is always going to be more stable and more damage resistant. And a carbon fiber wheel is, of course, much, much lighter. So if you're after performance, this is the holy grail. Um, but if you're after a different kind of look, and a lot of stability or such as we do at Brabus, you have a lot of very heavy cars you're probably always going to go for a high-end forged wheel and not for a carbon fiber setup although i've been talking to Jörn many times i'm super interested in building a carbon developing a carbon fiber wheel that is capable of carrying the loads that we have in for example a gls based Brabus car or a g-class based Brabus masterpiece but maybe we'll make it someday i thank you Welcome. Super interesting, absolutely. What's the other car you guys have? It's a Regera. Completely different car, same manufacturer, the Regera. So now we have the Gemera and the Regera. Exactly. After, do you have clients that are confusing it after three gin tonics? Uh, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> how did they get, do you know how they came up with the names? Uh, it's a Swedish uh, word. Gemera is a Swedish word for give more. Yes. And the Regera is to react. Give more and react. Yeah. Interesting. So Jamera and Regera. Cedric, can you say Jamera and <laughs> Regera and Jamera ten times fast? No. Okay, Cedric is going on strike behind the camera. Fine. Regera, tell me about it. Different, different animal. Two seater. Yeah. Uh, Obviously a super sports car. Yeah. This car was uh, released in uh, 2016 on the Geneva show. 
and the last car was produced the uh, end of last year. Nice. Um, there was 80 cars uh, made. 80. And okay. What is uh, really special about this car is uh, the drivetrain. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a gearbox or anything. It's 0 to 400 is 7,000 RPMs. Mm -hmm. If you have a combustion engine car with one gear. Exactly. Or two. Oh, no gear. Forward and reverse. Yeah. Uh, that's what makes Koenigsegg fascinating to me because they're not afraid to do things differently. What's the stats on the on the performance? Uh, 1500 horsepower. 1500? He says it like it's normal. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, we get used to it. <laughs> so it's 1500, that is 1000, 1500 horsepower. Exactly. How, how Do you know how heavy it is? 1700 kilograms. 1700 kilograms and 1500 horsepower. It's, it's the fast. speed record from uh, CO to 400 to CO. Oh, you did that on the on the airfield? Yeah, exactly. In, uh, in Sweden. And they have an airfield next to the factory, which is handy if you want to break zero to 400 speed records. Everybody should have an airfield near the factory. <laughs> Bugatti does, I believe. <laughs> Absolutely uh, crazy. Track, at least. Absolutely crazy. Orange interior, so somebody was in the mood for a colorful combination. Yeah. This is, this is um, somehow it's much more interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Last but not least, Cedric, I found your perfect company car from Monaco that gives you the right kind of attention. A ghost black badge extended wheelbase in purple and black with an orange stripe. I mean, jokes aside, here's a bit of an actual discussion in this. Now, there, is, there has been two-tone paints for a long time in the industry. In my personal opinion, they only work in rare occasions. This, apart from the fact that it's purple and black with orange, that you may like or not like, is a color combination that I think works rather well. On the Ghost and, for example, on the Maybach, so cars where you can clearly find a line to separate one paint color from another, it works really well. Still, I wouldn't choose purple and black as an exterior color combination. And the second discussion that you can have is how the market developed in the last 10 to 15 years when it comes to luxury cars. For example, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class was for a very, very long time the gold standard for many people when it came to luxury limousines. You can spend probably one and a half to two times the money that you spend on a Maybach on something like this, a Rolls-Royce Ghost, a Rolls-Royce Phantom, the even bigger model, or a Bentley Mosan. <laughs> Last but not least, of course, Brabus is here as an exhibitor. We are here as an exhibitor and we have been for many years at Top Marks Monaco. And this year we brought a few cars that I wanna show you two highlights of. One is the G900 Deep Blue and one is the brand new Brabus 930 based on the AMG GT63 SE performance. Let's jump right in and look at the Deep Blue. Absolutely spectacular car in a very, very, very deep blue, reminiscent of 904 Mercedes-Benz uh, blue. Same color as the Shadow 900 deep blue that we published last year. Same color as the Panerai Submersible S Brabus Edition blue shadow. Long name, beautiful watch. So there's a whole product family going on in that color. One of, which we've mentioned several times during the video, one of my favorite color combinations. Absolutely spectacular interior. Full Brabus masterpiece means full Brabus masterpiece interior. There's a lot of carbon fiber going on, blue accents combined with gray leather. I'm absolutely in love with this interior. Uh, Monoblock Z, Monoblock Z wheels, 24 inch. The rocket style, rocket style exhaust. Of course, a full wide star conversion that makes the car wider and look a bit sportier. The rear spoiler, carbon fiber, exterior parts. Overall, one of my absolute favorite versions that we have built based on a G-Class ever. The second one is the Brabus 930 based on the new AMG GT63 SE performance, long name, fascinating car. Very fast car, 930 horsepower, hybrid drivetrain. It's still a GT63 S, but with a lot of upgrades. And this one, of course, comes in black because it is our press car. It's the car that we actually use to shoot the video. And the interior, you also you can also see in the video, I'll link it down in the description, is one of the coolest, again, we've built this year. It's black with red accents, and I'm absolutely in love with it. 
Beautiful car, of course, full Brabus exhaust, Brabus monobloc Z wheels, a carbon fiber in the front, adapted suspension, a lowering kit, and a completely new interior on the inside. Absolutely fascinating car, if you ask me. And maybe a cool platform for more to come. That's it. That's one of the top marks 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. And maybe some of our highlights are your highlights too. And now I've got a show to work. So I got to get back to our display and I'll see you guys in the next video.